Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Moderator. When I was much younger, I always wondered how it felt to be over 50. <laughs> Tonight I know. Madam Moderator, Leader of the Parliamentary Opposition, Mr. Robert Corbyn, leaders of the member parties of a Partnership for National Unity, members of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the media, members of the National Assembly, distinguished guests, Guyanese, we are assembled tonight with a common cause. Everywhere in Guyana, there's a deep preoccupation with the condition of our country, an expectation that there must be change. It is a special honor for me to be part of that change, to have been elected as the presidential candidate of a partnership for national unity. I'm grateful for the trust that you've bestowed on me. I'm grateful for the greetings and prayers I've received from religious people and the public. Grateful for the cooperation I've received from my colleagues and partners in the APNU. I thank all of you who've come here tonight. I believe that you came here because you believe that this country can be what our people want it to be and what they can achieve. I thank you for sharing with us the belief that on the rubble of our exclusive and divisive political system, we can erect an edifice of inclusionary democracy. We believe that in the face of confrontation, there can be cooperation. That in the face of failure, there can be fulfillment. That in the face of despair, there can be hope. Thank you for coming here tonight to share in that belief. Guyanese, our parties, the Guyana Action Party, the National Front Alliance, the People's National Congress Reform and the Working People's Alliance are assembled with a single mission, a common cause. We are committed to give full meaning to our national constitution by creating an inclusionary democracy. As our colleague Rupert Ryan mentioned a few minutes ago, the principal objective of our political system is to establish an inclusionary democracy. The time to seize that opportunity has come. Our task tonight is to establish that inclusionary democracy for future generations to enjoy. As we look forward, however, we must look backwards. We must remember how when the self-government constitution was introduced, almost exactly 50 years ago, on the 18th of July, 1961. What a coincidence. That constitution transformed our political life in this country. What should have been one step forward towards political pro progress turned out to be two steps backwards on the road to social integration. The political reality of the electoral arithmetic of 1961 was that the People's Progressive Party gained 42.6% of the votes and was awarded 57% of the seats in the Legislative Assembly. The People's National Congress, on the other hand, with 41% of the votes, won 31% of the seats, and the United Force, with 16% of the votes, won 12% of the seats, a total of 43% coming out of 57% of the votes. The social reality of that event in August 1961 when elections were held was that the major ethnic groups became mobilized behind three parties. Proportional representation, which replaced the first past the post system, was meant to cultivate coalitions, but it was inadequate to prevent ethnic polarization in the years that followed. Guyanese, confrontation characterized the old politics. Ethnic arithmetic determined election tactics. The winner-take-all jackpot became the object of every campaign. Our political landscape 
became a battlefield, not of ideas, but of racial rivalry. Communal conflict hampered human development. That system has now become dangerously dysfunctional. Our society, under the PPP's 19-year one-party regime, has become more deeply divided than it has ever been at any time over the last 100 years. <laughs> Guyanese. The tide of ideas in Guyanese politics has turned. Today, 15th of July, marks the birthday of the new politics. A birth begotten by a partnership of national unity. We are more than a party. We are a movement, a movement for the reaffirmation of our common commitment to confront the challenges facing our country. We are a movement for the creation of a community, a community with a common cause. That is, the establishment of a just society in a stable political environment with a thriving economy. Most of all, we are a movement to secure the future for our youth and for our children. The People's Progressive Party is desperate for the first time in two decades. The Council of Hemispheric Affairs assessment in January this year, titled Guyanese President Leaves a Tattered Legacy, accusing him of bequeathing stagnation, violence, corruption, art sectarianism, and unfettered crime to posterity, posterity was an abysmal but accurate farewell term report on President Bar Jagdeo's 12-year tenure of office. The PPP must realize how it failed the people. It has deprofessionalized the public and security services. It has demoralized civil society. It has debilitated our economy and the trade union movement. It has distorted the national economy. Guyanese, how does the PPP expect people to feel safe? when Guyana's murder rate is three times that of the USA? How does the PPP expect people to be hopeful when 7,500 children drop out of our primary and secondary schools every year? How does the PPP expect people to be proud when three out of four children who wrote the national grade six examination cannot score 50% in English? How does the PPP expect people to be happy when four out of 10 children grow up in poverty. The PPP has failed parents who want their children to be taught in schools with basic amenities like running water. The PPP has failed students with qualifications who cannot find jobs in this economy. The PPP has failed workers who are crushed by an oppressive value-added tax. The PPP has failed fishermen and miners who is scared to go to work out of fear of pirates and bandits. The PPP has failed hinterland residents who yearn for water, light, and good roads and bridges. The PPP has failed coastland residents who yearn for protection from annual flooding. The PPP has failed us because the entire set of values that they possess is wrong. Its attitude to trade unions is wrong. Its attitude to the private media is wrong. Its attitude to the University of Guyana is wrong. Its attitude to the public service is wrong. Its attitude to the foreign service is wrong. Its attitude to the national insurance scheme is wrong. Its attitude to public security is wrong. Its attitude to ethnic relations is wrong. The PPP has failed because it cannot understand that a nation is not a plantation. Its, its reckless mismanagement of public security has made us into a narco state. It has offended the basic principles of responsibility of any government 
to protect the lives of its own citizens. Its security forces have conducted torture. The death squads have carried out extrajudicial killings. It has sullied the reputation of this country in the Western Hemisphere. It has made us ashamed of the things that we used to be proud of.